Hello, everyone, and welcome again to 2020, the talk show that puts the spotlight on you. I'm Rotarian Sandeep Bodhi, and I thank you for joining me once again. This is the third in the series, and uh, I am really overwhelmed with the response to the first two. Uh, those videos have, uh, have reached 9,000 views, and they are still increasing. The feedback is very encouraging. Uh, uh, I really like it. Uh, thank you for the feedback. You know, either way, let it please keep coming in, and that's what encourages me to keep doing this. But this program is not about me. Like I said, I've been blessed to meet uh, in my life very, very wonderful people who've got some really fascinating stories to share. And uh, I believe those stories can actually inspire, motivate, and even teach the rest of us uh, a few things as to how to make our own lives better. Uh, many of them go about their daily lives, you know, nonchalantly, and we don't really know what they've been through. Uh, some of their stories have probably never been shared on a public platform. And many of them are even appearing on screen for the first time. So uh, I'd like you to be, you know, give them those margins and be nice to them. Okay. I'm very excited to introduce our third guest, a daughter of a police officer, started off in a Kannada medium school near Mysore, finally completed her BSc in chemistry, botany, and zoology at the age of 18. Wanted to be a doctor, but her parents couldn't afford that. And she was married off immediately and moved from Bengaluru to Mumbai. It was Bangalore and Mumbai at that point in time. Two children and 16 years later, she decides to do her B.Ed. Went on to do her double masters in sociology and education and topped it up with a PhD. Well, in a way, she did fulfill her dream of becoming a doctor, though not the medical type. And after a brief stint in the corporate world, she is back to her true calling of educating children, is now the principal of a prestigious school in the northern suburbs of Mumbai. I'd like you all to please welcome Dr. Pramila Kudwa. Hello, Dr. Kudwa. Thank you for being on the show with us. It was a generous introduction. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> well, I was not trying to flatter you, but so that's what it is. <laughs> okay. Uh, before we start, let me ask you. How are you and your teachers coping with this entire online teaching scenario that's you know suddenly been thrust upon all of us, the, the students, the teachers, and especially the parents? We are coping. Yeah, the question was how? <laughs> the best yeah. of our ability. Anyway, jokes apart. Jokes apart. Yeah. Um, yeah. It has been a lot of stress. Initially, when the lockdown was announced, we were not ready for it. So we started off with asynchronous teaching, which was easy for us to dole out. And we also looked at the fact that maybe there is not going to be, there are not going to be enough devices at home for every child to use when the async, async I mean, if we were to have a synchronous mode of teaching. So with that, we doled out asynchronous modules, which worked out fine. But then, they wanted some interaction with the teachers, which was not going to happen with the asynchronous modules. So a lot of research had to go into, which is the right kind of platform, which is the platform that we can use, how we can use it. So the teachers had to be trained in ensuring that they are able to deliver. So a lot of work went into it and uh, we are able to keep afloat. Yeah, that's interesting because uh, I think it's probably been um, as challenging for uh, uh, not just the teachers but also the students and uh, even the parents. You know, probably who have a lot more, lot more, lot more time on their hands. You know, to be more involved in the educational process. Not just that. Yeah. What used to happen was earlier, uh, the teachers used to do all the teaching, and the parents just had to probably get them to do the homework. Now, the teachers are going to only teach them and every aspect of ensuring that the child learns what is being taught has to be done by the parent. Wow. So it's not easy. So uh, how, do, how does that dynamic change? Do the teachers feel like, you know, like they're under a microscope? Helicopter parents. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Oh, they're hovering around all the time trying to find out what <laughs> Okay, I understand. Okay, coming back to you. Okay, um, let me go back to your early childhood. You know, you you mentioned to me while we were talking that uh, one of the things that you did as a child was uh, Indian classical singing. Okay, so could you please tell us more about it and why why that? As a child, I didn't do singing. I did classical dancing. Oh, okay. 
I slide corrected. It's so uh, when I grew up, that I moved into the uh, singing. singing. So okay, I so uh, I, I was about to take back my uh, question about getting you to sing, but now I think I'll let that stand. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I, I can understand with all the talking that you've been doing online. So I think, you know, that's, uh, we, we'll give that a go by. Okay. So, so. Uh, yeah, so, so <laughs> tell me, uh, teaching has always been your passion and uh, you've all, you, you started off your career in Mumbai, I understand as being a teacher. You had, you also did a brief stint in the corporate world, you know, and, and you worked for some uh, very prominent companies. Uh, uh, how did that whole gel and how did you come about and did you, did you feel at any point like, you know, what am I doing in this corporate world? Did you feel like a misfit or something? Um, when I first stepped out of um, my teaching, I moved into Z interactive learning systems and it was not really cut off from education per se. I was still involved with the web content making and there was still a lot of connection with the academics. So I did miss school so much. But later on, when I moved into Bombay Dying, it was fun. There was a lot of learning that happened. I grew as a psycho social, um, a person who could give psychosocial input. But that was when the withdrawal started coming in, a withdrawal from wanting to be back in school and I was missing my classroom. I was missing my teaching. I was missing the inputs that the children gave during the class. So I started looking out. I wanted to get out of there, get out of the corporate and come back to academics. And unfortunately or fortunately for me, the first school where I was working, that principal uh, passed away due to cancer. She was a classmate of mine also. And the management asked me to come back. And without thinking twice, I took a downward revision in salary and got back into academics, no regrets. Yeah. So uh, when you were in the corporate world, you know, uh, the, uh, the things that drive people when they work in corporates is very different from the, from the you know, motivation and passion that drives people when you're teaching. How did you cope with all of that? You know, like I said, uh, it must have been a big change for you. And of course, teaching was your passion. So you came back. But uh, I would like to know a little bit more about, you know, how you perceived the difference. Because since you have, you're educated to have, you know, those kind of insights. So you could probably share those with us. Now, what are the challenges that you that you faced? You know, I didn't really have too much of that to worry about. Because when I was working with my, in my first job was still dealing with the academics. So they were all people who were from the teaching background. So we still had the same kind of thinking. So there was no problem. But when I moved to Bombay Dying, that was also not so bad in the sense that we, we were a, a kind of a group that was created and they were looking into brand building. And we were the ones, a handful of people who were directly reporting to Neswadia. So it was a different kind of a setup. We didn't really feel that uh, the so-called disconnect that you mentioned. It was it was nice, and we were one small cohesive group which worked together. And in between, for thirty days in a in a year, we were sent to Bangalore, and we stayed in the Britannia guest house learning. At any point of the day, we were learning, and there was no fixed time. There was no time that says, "Okay, working hours are over." 12 in the night, we were still working. So I didn't feel the disconnect. Yeah. Okay, since uh, since you've taught at different levels and you've taught in different uh, institutions, uh, also you've been involved in education uh, with Z Interactive. So, you know, you did a lot of, uh, you did a lot of work on online education, uh, you know, way back, you know, maybe uh, almost 20 years back, you were you know, talking of online education at that point in time. Uh, the things that were there at that point in time and the things that are now there, the challenges that we now have, I mean, other than the technology aspect, what about the mindset aspect? What's, uh, do you have some insights to share on that? Mindsets as in what exactly are you looking at? Uh, in the sense that uh, the approach for the, um, uh, the audience, you know, the, the customers for online education, 
the challenges for companies to take it to them because there are lots of companies now who are involved in some form or the other of online education there are corporates that are involved you know, this this uh, lockdown has opened up you know a world of opportunity for people to teach online and to learn online at that point in time what were the challenges that were there and now what are there you know so you've seen that whole shift happen you know over two decades so when you did that then and you are doing this now so what are the learnings from that that we can find out when we did that then people were not ready at all i remember i had to go to bangalore to get i don't remember all the details i had to sell the sell the idea that this is going to work and uh, the gentleman the bureaucrat who was there was not willing to accept that this is workable uh -huh. and we started off in, in in english and finally ended up having a talk in kannada <laughs> yeah. So and the somewhere, no, the Canada helped. The Canada. Yeah, it, was, helped. it was also probably strategic that they sent you to Bangalore. <laughs> they sent you to Bangalore, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the corporate mind works like that, you know. So it's like uh, you know whom to send for what. So anyway, so that's good. So so you're saying that they were you know well ahead of their times and yes. in terms of acceptance, I think now probably there is a lot more acceptance. You know, probably. Uh, not not even much of a choice in terms of you know what we have to do no, i have been given to understand that i believe in the past 4 months um what the technology would have improved in the next 5 years has happened in the past 4 months oh yes yeah, sure. i i i tend to agree with you on that because uh, we've been you know uh, uh, forced into doing this and we've been everyone has been shaken out of their comfort zones you know individuals as well as companies so everyone's done double time thinking of you know what they could have done and what the situation demands right now so they just gone ahead and done it so yeah so it's right okay so uh, while you're teaching and doing everything uh, and i must share this with the audience okay uh, dr kudwa is also an author of a book which he wrote and it's got a very interesting name i'm really enamored with that name it's called from chalk to talk really awesome name what made you come up with that name i know it's very obvious now in hindsight everyone's smarter you know but what made you come up with that name at that point in time you know before i go to the name i need to tell you why i wrote the book oh sure please go ahead because people have been telling me to write a book for for a long time now but i could never muster up my motivation um or the courage to write a book so it so happened a student of mine sent me a a message which says die empty my first reaction was good heavens good heavens i know i am old i know i have got gray hair but somebody doesn't need to tell me this uh, but then i started reading about it you know it's got such a profound thought behind it you know it has got so much of indian philosophy ingrained into it that when a person moves on the person needs to pass on the knowledge to the others the the whole um, you know bhishma pitamaha is lying down on the bed of arrows and the pandavas and the kauravas go to him to learn from him on his death bed and uh, the brahmarshi sorry uh, yeah the brahmarshi ravana dies Ra before he dies rama sends lakshman to him to learn from him so this is a part of our uh, philosophy and it kind of appealed to me and i started writing it now the book the title we did a lot of googling we found out wrote down a few names and then a, then a teacher of mine she and i were talking and in the process the name from chalk to talk emerged i don't know if pritam is still here she's if she's watching well she was instantly. i'm sorry i i i didn't catch her name her name was pritam pritam okay Well, Pritham, if you're if you're watching this, or somebody who knows Pritham is watching this, well, you know you got acknowledged. Yeah. So, I was talking to her, and that's when uh, this name came up, and I quite quite liked it because from chalk we end up going down to talk. So, so, so now, so so now, uh, are we going to expect a, a sequel? You know, because now we're online. You know, so from chalk to talk to what tech? I don't know. <laughs> from talk to tech i i don't know i'm just thinking like yeah I, i still haven't got over the shock of having written one book so i need to i need to get over that and then maybe yes in between i have been writing articles which are getting published 
that's been an ongoing process maybe i'll just call out all these articles and put put together a collection Okay, so uh, uh, as uh, as someone who's you know seen this industry for over many years, seen it changing and changing drastically, also, uh, what would be your advice to the aspiring teachers, you know, or those who want to come in and and teach and be part of the education, you know, the administration, the teaching? What would be your advice to them? I'm, I'm sure you've you've done a lot. I mean, you you've been with the teachers training college and in institutes also. But what would be you know, since we're online? and people are watching what would be your advice to them those who want to teach believe in yourself balance the head and the heart if you have to err at all err on the side of the child wow okay that's uh, that's profound but uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is going to take a while to sink easy. in <laughs> yeah it's, it's not easy, easy i know yeah so it's not easy right um, if uh and i i'd love to ask this question you know? so if you were made like you know the the education minister for a day okay what's the first thing that you would do i would look at all this online teaching circus that has been going on i would involve a few more academicians a few more parents and try and take a balanced point of view you you feel some things i miss in terms of uh, the balance is not proper right now what if it what is exactly? not online under the lockdown if it is not online what else should it be mm -hmm. so so what would you do you you would call in experts and do what experts and find out what is it that that they want instead of having this my side and your side instead of that let us take one common consensus and see what is the best thing for our child for our child not your child for our child right okay great okay so uh, uh, i come to the end of the program and dr pramila i'd i'd like to ask you one last question okay uh, if you were to go back and if you were given an option of doing a different stream okay different stream i'm not asking you about you know you say i'll do teaching all over again that's generally what people do because very happy with what they're doing so other than teaching and medicine okay because you always wanted to be a doctor ah i already ruled that out <laughs> i ruled that out so other than teaching and medicine what is it that you would have actually gone and you know wanted to have done singing. your choice singing. ah singing okay uh, any particular type or style i just enjoy music mm -hmm. i did okay. learn classical music i enjoy that because with the classical music background you can sing anything wow okay but i don't uh, know that yes oh breathless shankar mahadev yeah. he says it openly he says it openly mm -hmm. and he just he also goes takes that step one step forward and says karnatak music is what you need to learn Okay, you know, I, I, we mentioned about Pritham. Yes, she's online and she is watching. <laughs> <laughs> thank okay, you, Pritham. Sir. Yes, thank you very much for watching. Right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, so yes, uh, Dr. Kudwa, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, thank you for uh, consenting to be on the show and, and sharing your story and your insights. And. Um, for all of those who are watching you know please do share your thoughts and comments uh, uh, here uh, on uh, facebook and on twitter and uh, please do share the video if you feel it it will probably help somebody else also uh, like i said you know we keep try i keep trying to bring you people and with uh, stories which are wonderful and fascinating to share uh, if you do know of any such people please reach out to me and let me know and uh, share and like the page so that uh, you'll be uh, you know aware of which is the next program that we're doing Uh, thank you very much once again everyone uh, please stay safe and dr kudwa thank you very much for once again thank being you. on the show thank you my pleasure entirely thank you yeah, stay online i will just end the broadcast yeah okay thank you very much dr